the room on the roof extract by ruskin bond in his room rusty was a king his domain was the sky and everything he could see his subjects were the people who passed below but they were his subjects only while they were below and he was on the roof and he spied on them through the branches of the banyan tree his close confidants were the inhabitants of the banyan tree which of course included kishan it was a day of the picnic and rusty had just finished bathing at the water tank he had become used to the people at the tank and had made friends with the ayas and their charges he had come to like their bangles and bracelets and ankle bells he liked to wash one of them at the tap squatting on her haunches scrubbing her feet and making much music with the bells and bangles she would roll her sari up to the knees to give her legs greater freedom and crouch forward so that her jacket revealed a modest expanse of waist it was a day of the picnic and rusty had bathed and now he sat on a disused chimney drying himself in the sun summer was coming the lychees were almost ready to eat the mangoes ripened under kishan's greedy eye in the afternoons the sleepy sunlight stole through the branches of the banyan tree and made a patchwork of arched shadows on the walls of the house the inhabitants of the trees knew that summer was coming so my sleepers knew it and slept lazily against his hills and kishan grumbled and became more untidy and even suri seemed to be taking a rest from his private investigations yes summer was coming and it was a day of the picnic the car had been inspected and the two bottles that kapoor had hidden in the dicky had been found and removed kapoor was put into khaki drill trousers and a bush shirt and pronounced fit to drive a basket of food and a gramophone were in the dicky suri had a camera slung over his shoulders kishan was sporting a gurkha hat and rasi had on a thick leather belt reinforced with steel knobs Mina had dressed in a hurry and looked the better for it and for once Somi had tied his turban to perfection everyone present said Mina if so get into the car i'm waiting for my dog said Suri and he had hardly made the announcement when from around the corner came a yapping mongrel his call prickly heat said Suri will put him in the back seat He'll go in the dicky," said Kishan. "I can see the lice from here." Trickly Heat wasn't any particular kind of dog; just a kind of dog. He hadn't even the stump of a tail, but he had sharp, pointed ears that wagged as well as any tail, and they were working furiously this morning. Suri and the dog were both deposited in the dicky. Somi, Kishan, and Rusty made themselves comfortable in the back seat, and Mina sat. next to her husband in the front the car belched and lurched forward and stirred up great clouds of dust then accelerating sped out of the compound and across the narrow wooden bridge that spanned the canal the sun rose over the forest and the spiral of smoke from a passing train was caught by a slanting ray and spangled with gold the air was fresh and exciting it was 10 miles to the river and the sulfur springs Ten miles of intermittent grumbling and gaiety with trickly heat, yapping in the dicky, and Kapoor whistling at the wheel, and Kishan letting fly from the window with a catapult. Somi said, "Rusty, your pimples will leave you if you bathe in the sulphur springs." "I would rather have pimples than pneumonia," replied Rusty. "Ah, oh, but it's not cold," said Kishan. "I would bathe myself, but I don't feel very well." Then you shouldn't have come," said Mina from the front. "I didn't want to disappoint you all," said Kishan. Before reaching the springs, the car had to cross one or two river beds, usually dry at this time of the year. But the mountains had tricked the party, for there was a good deal of water to be seen, and the current was strong. "It's not very deep," said Kapu at the first river bed. "I think we can drive through easily." The car dipped forward. Rolled down the bank and entered the current with a great splash. In the dicky, Suri got a soaking. 
got to go fast said mr kapoor or will stick he accelerated and a great spray of water rose on both sides of the car kishan cried out for sheer joy but at the back suri was having a fit for his tricks i think the dog's fallen out said meena good said somi i think suri's fallen out said rusty good said somi suddenly the engine spluttered and choked and the car came to a standstill we have stuck said kapoor ah uh, that said meena bitingly is obvious now i suppose you want us all to get out and push yes that's a good idea you are a genius kishan had his shoes off in a flash and was leaping about in the water with great abandon the water reached up to his knees and as he hadn't been swept off his feet the others followed his example meena rolled her sari up to the thighs and stepped gingerly into the current her legs so seldom exposed were very fair in contrast to her feet and arms but they were strong and nimble and she held herself erect rusty stumbled to her side intending to aid her but ended by clinging to her dress for support suri was not to be seen anywhere where is suri asked meena here said a muffled voice from the floor of the dicky i've got sick i can't push all right said meena but you'll clean up the mess yourself so me and kishan were looking for fish kapoor tooted the horn are you all going to push he said or oh, are we going to have the picnic in the middle of the river rusty was surprised at kapoor's unusual display of common sense when sober mr kapoor did sometimes have moments of sanity everyone put their weight against the car and pushed with all their strength and as the car moved slowly forward rusty felt a thrill of health and pleasure run through his body in front of him meena pushed silently the muscles of her thighs trembling with the strain they all pushed silently with determination the sweat ran down somi's face and neck and kishan's jaws worked desperately on his chewing gum but kapoor sat in comfort behind the wheel pressing and pulling knobs and saying harder push harder and suri began to be sick again trickly it was strangely quiet and it was assumed that the dog was sick too with one last final heap the car was moved up the opposite bank and on to the road everyone groaned and flopped to the ground meena's hands were trembling you shouldn't have pushed said rusty i enjoyed it she said smiling at him help me to get up He rose and taking her hand pulled her to her feet they stood together holding hands Kapoor fiddled around with starters and chokes and things it won't go he said i'll have to look at the engine we might as well have the picnic here so out came the food and lemonade bottles and miraculously enough out came suri and prickly heat looking as fit as ever hey said kishan we thought you were sick I suppose you were just making room for lunch. Before he eats anything, said Somi, he is going to get wet. Let's take him for a swim. Somi, Kishan, and Rusty caught hold of Suri and dragged him along the river bank to a spot downstream where the current was mild and the water warm and waist high. They disrobed Suri, took off their own clothes, and ran down the sandy slopes to the water's edge. Feet splashed, ankle deep calves. thrust into the current and then the grounds are really disappeared beneath their feet somi was a fine swimmer his supple limbs cut through the water and when he went under he was almost as powerful the checkered colors of his body could be seen first here and then there twisting and turning diving and disappearing for what seemed like several minutes and then coming up under someone's feet rusty and kishan were amateurs when they tried swimming under water the bottoms remain on the surface having all the appearance of floating boys suri couldn't swim at all but though he was often out of his depth and frequently dumped managed to avoid his death by drowning they heard meena calling them for food and scrambled up the bank the dog yapping at their heels they ate in the shade of a poinsettia tree whose red long fingered flowers dropped sensually to the running water and when they had eaten lay down to sleep or drowse the afternoon away when rusty awoke it was evening and kapu was tinkering about with the calf muttering to himself a little cross because he hadn't had a drink since the previous night so men kishan were back in the river 
splashing away and this time they had prickly heat for company. Suri wasn't inside. Meena stood in a clearing at the edge of the forest. <coughs> Rusty went up to Meena but she wandered into the thicket. The boy followed. She must have expected him for she showed no surprise at his appearance. Listen to the jungle, she said. I can't hear anything. Oh, that's what I mean. Listen to nothing. They were surrounded by silence, a dark pensive silence. Heavy, scented with magnolia and jasmine. It was shattered by a piercing shock, a cry that rose on all sides, echoing against the vibrating air, and instinctively, Rusty put his arm around Meena, whether to protect her or to protect himself. He didn't really know and held her tight. It's only a bird, she said. What are you afraid of? But he was unable to release his hold, and she made no effort to free herself. She laughed into his face, and her eyes danced in the shadows, but he stifled her laugh with his lips. It was a clumsy, awkward kiss, but fiercely passionate, and Mina responded, tightening the embrace, returning the fervor of the kiss. They stood together in the shadows, Rasi intoxicated with beauty and sweetness, Meena with freedom and the comfort of being loved. A monkey chattered shrilly in a branch above them and the spell was broken. Oh, Meena, shh, you spoil these things by saying them. Oh, Meena, they kissed again but the monkey set up such a racket that they feared it would bring Kapoor and the others to the spot. So they walked through the trees, holding hands. They were barefoot but they didn't notice the thorns and brambles that prickled their feet. They walked through heavy foliage, nettles and long grass until they came to a clearing and a stream. Rusty was conscious of a wild urge, a desire to escape from the town and its people and live in the forest with Meena, with no one but Meena. As though conscious of his thoughts, she said, this is where we drink, in the trees we eat and sleep and here we drink. She laughed but Rusty had a dream in his heart. The pebbles on the bed of the stream were round and smooth, taking the flow of water without resistance. Only weed and rock could resist water. Only weed or rock could resist life. It would be nice to stay in the jungle, said Meena. Let's stay. We'll be found. We cannot escape from others. Even the world is too small. Maybe there is more freedom in your little room than in all the jungles and all the world. Rusty pointed to the stream and whispered, look. Meena looked and at the same time a deer looked up. They looked at each other with startled, fascinated eyes, the deer and Meena. It was a spotted cheetah, a small animal with delicate, quivering limbs and muscles and green antlers. Rusty and Meena didn't move, nor did the deer. They might have gone on staring at each other all night if somewhere a twig hadn't snapped sharply. At the snap of the twig, the deer jerked its head up with a start lifted one foot pensively, sniffed the air, then left the stream and in a single bound disappeared into the forest. The spell was broken, the magic lost, only the water ran on and life ran on. Let's go back, said Mina. They walked back through the dapple sunlight, swinging their clasped hands like two children who had only just discovered love. Their hands parted as they reached the riverbed, miraculously enough, Kapoor had started the car and it was waving his arms and shouting to everyone to come home. Everyone was ready to start back except for Surya and Prickly Heat, who were nowhere to be seen. Nothing, thought Meena, would have been better than for Surya to disappear forever. But unfortunately, she had taken full responsibility for his well-being and did not relish the thought of facing his strangely affectionate mother. Shoshi asked Rusty to shout for him. Rusty shouted and Meena shouted and Sumi shouted and then they all shouted together. Only Shuri didn't shout. He is up to his tricks, said Kishan. We shouldn't have caught him, brought him. Let's pretend we are leaving, then he'll be scared. So Kapu started the engine and everyone got in and it was only then that Shuri came running from the forest. The dog at his heels, his shirt tails flapping in the breeze, his hair wedged between his eyes and his spectacles. Hey, wait for us, he cried. Do you want me to die? Kishan mumbled in the affirmative and swore quietly. We thought you were in the dicky, said Rusty. Surian prickly heat climbed into the dicky and at the same time the car entered the river with a determined splashing and churning of wheels to emerge the victor. Everyone cheered and Somi gave Kapoor such an enthusiastic slap on the back that the 
least recipient nearly caught his head in the steering wheel. It was dark now and all that could be seen of the countryside was what the headlights showed. Rusty had hopes of seeing a panther or a tiger for this was their territory but only a few gods blocked the road. However, for the benefit of Suri, Somi told a story of a party that had gone for an outing in a car and on returning home had found a panther in the digging. Vishen fell asleep just before they reached the outskirts of Dehra, his fuzzy head resting on Rusty's shoulder. Rusty felt protected towards the boy, for a bond of genuine affection had grown between the two. Somi was Rusty's best friend in the same way that Ranveer was a friend and their friendship was on a high emotional plane. But Kishan was a brother more than a friend. He loved Rusty, but without knowing or thinking or saying it, that is the love of a brother. So we began singing, then the town came into sight, the bazaar lights twinkling defiance at the starry night. Thank you for attending this session. Do share and subscribe to this channel for more lessons like this. Check out other video lessons by clicking on the video.